We're here on Daf Pei Zayin Amid Beis. We're halfway through the Mishnah. And our goal now, the immediate goal, not for the whole Shia, but is to complete the Mishnah. The Mishnah says the following. Lo zev zez ha-koyen lo bimitzi osa v'lo mamaisi adeha. Since we invalidated the Ksuba from both the first husband, who as it turns out is still alive, and the second, then those rights that are embedded and generated by the Ksuba, for example, Mitziyasa and Maisi Adeha are completely null and void. Normally, if a married woman within the framework of Ksuba finds a lost object, then that object accrues to her husband. And that was again a Takana that would encourage her husband to support his wife. And Maisi Adeha means her earnings which means that she has a job and she gets paid a salary, those no longer accrue. Well, again, according to, you know, if we talk about the second husband, that's not really marriage. I mean, there's no reason why he should be able to collect our mitzia or maizia there. But even in the case of the first husband, we're going to say that the first husband loses his rights because of what we're going to see in the Gemara later on, that he wasn't so 100% either. Below Afaris Nidoreha, normally issues a marriage relationship, grants the husband rights to null and void her Nidoreha which you're going to learn from this week's parasha, parasha's matas. But in this case, because the marriage has to be terminated and we obligate, again, leave out the second guy, that's not even marriage, but the first husband, we obligate him to deliver a get to his wife. Therefore, we don't see this as full-fledged kosher issues. The entire thrust of the Allah is to get him to we deliver a get and completely sever the Ichus. And in such a case, he does not get the rights of Hafaris and the Dharma. Now, I would like to assume, until I prove myself wrong, that this halacha of lo Hafaris and the Dharma is a Durabonim. It's not a Durais halacha. Because on a Durais level, he, the first husband, is married to her. And therefore, the Torah grants him rights to be made for Nidaran. You can penalize him and punish him this way and that way, give him patch because he didn't behave properly, but still, he is the husband, and the Torah grants him the rights to be made for his wife's Nidaran and completely null and void them. But since the Rabbanon have instituted a Chovas Get, in a sense, that requirement of a get breaks up the issues. It's it's on a drabana level, it's no longer full-fledged issues. The marriage relationship is how we say on the rocks, you know, it's it's about to to peter out. So what the Rabbanan are doing here is they are removing the mafkia, the schus ha. Baal, in the case of the Baal Rishon, to be made for Hanadar. Furthermore, points of Bas Yisrael, Nifsala Minakuhuna. Now that's a Doraisa that she cannot marry a Kohen because she had an extramarital relationship, which makes her into a zona. And a Kohen is not allowed to marry a zona. Oh, okay, Baruch Shekiman. I see in the English, he also adds the word zona. He makes another point here, which I, I, I meant to say, but it was down in my subconscious mind. Lachora, what relevance is there about her marrying a Kohen? 
because we required both of these husbands to deliver a get. And a coin is not allowed to marry a grusha. So why do you have to add the category of zona, the psal of zona? Forget about the psal of zona, she's a grusha. And this would only be relevant if both her husbands died and she was a widow from both her husbands. She cannot marry a coin godo, even as a widow, but she can marry a coin hejo, if not for the fact that she's a zona. So again, in 99 out of 100 cases, one of these two gentlemen certainly would have to give her a get. And once she receives the get, she cannot marry a coin because she's a grusha. But in that one out of a hundred cases, in a scenario where both of the husbands died, leaving her with the status of an almana, and therefore she's not a grusha, then ostensibly she should be able to get married to a coin, but the answer is she can't marry a coin because she's a zona. Ubas levi minamase. Now this is a little bit more complicated. Because the law of a levy who has rights to collect masa should be understood as a monetary right, a financial right. It's not ritual. It's not like kahuna, which is a reflection of kedusha, but rather it's his monetary right to collect masa. What does it mean when it says that a Bas Levi is disqualified from Masa? Why is that so? Masa has no Kedusha to it, not like Truma. Again, I'm tempted to assume that this is a Drabona. He says, ordinarily, a Levi's daughter, if she's a Zona, is not disqualified from mass. You know, you talk about kahuna, you talk about kedushas kahuna, you talk about truma that has sanctity, but mass there is monetary obligations. It's the value of the tenth of his produce that belongs to the lady. So why in this case is she disqualified from mass? Call her his own if you will, but it's irrelevant. He says the Rabbanon disqualified this woman as part of her penalty for not investigating properly. That's called Isha Daiko Mitzvah, that when she hears from one witness that her husband died, she doesn't automatically jump the gun and get married. She should check out and interrogate people until she finds ample evidence to indicate that her husband in fact died. She didn't do so. The proof is in the pudding. He's alive and well. So we're going to penalize her. If she's a boss lady, she will not collect mass. Next. Last coin in a truma. Okay, that's pretty simple because now she's a zona, so she can't collect truma. That's a dorai salo. So again, we have to assume that these two gentlemen died without giving a get, because otherwise she has the status of a grusha and she cannot eat coin. Uh, true. He says a Kohen's daughter who married a non Kohen may not eat Truma if she subsequently became widowed or divorced and childless from her non Kohen husband. Ah, she reverts back to her primary status and she eats Truma. I made a mistake. I said that a Grusha does not eat Truma. That's not, that's not, scratch that for the record. She goes back to her father's house and she eats Truma. In the present case, the woman becomes, again, part of a penalty, disqualified forever, forevermore from eating truma. Not sure why that's a dirabona. I think this is the right. So let me just read this. Penalty opposed.
For this, I needed Masifta, but my son was not able to buy me Masifta. says she's prohibited from eating truma only as a result of rabbinic penalty, but not by Torah law. Why is that so? We'll look at page 91. Just, I doubt if you, but this is a penalty. Are you with me? Uh, I don't get it. She's a Zona del Raisa. A Zona can eat true. I don't know. A Grush is one thing, but a Zona is something else. A Zona is absurd. Again, he tells you to look on page 91. On this. Unless, and again, this is crazy, unless there's a different to a non deliberate zone. And she didn't do this deliberately. She's guilty for not being more careful, but you can't say that she deliberately went into the room to have an adulterous relationship. Why would that many make any difference as far as Achilles? For that I need a massif. What would happen if she was taken captive? And also would be a Dorai Salah. She she's completely puzzled from Kahuna. I don't think it made a difference whether she was raped or again, if she's married, I'm talking about a married. Oh no. That's that's a point that has to be has to be investigated. Because he's writing here that the psul here is the Rabban. You just see it. did he get it from Rashi? Uh, you see, Rashi min a true min a He writes for chain truma de rabbon. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's exactly what. In other words, Rashi's telling you that if you have something called truma de rabbon, she can't eat truma de rabbon. She certainly is psula do raisa. Ah, he's saying that why would Rashi have to tell me the chain with truma de rabbon? If she's psula do raisa, then she certainly can't eat true with the rabbanon. But maybe there's a half meaning that the rabbanon in this case would be more lenient because she wasn't deliberate and they're going to allow her to eat true with the rabbanon because they were the ones who created the entity of true with the rabbanon. They can now say who is disqualified and who's not disqualified from eating true with the rabbanon. And they decided that she's disqualified from true with the rabbanon. They didn't have to make that decision. Even if on a derisive level, she's but we had a half meter that all oh, right, she's psula derisive, but the rabbana when they institute a new kind of truma, let's say truma sirakos from vegetables, is the rabbana. They're not going to prohibit her because she was not deliberate from eating truma the rabbana truma sirakos. But Kamash Walan, the Mishnah is saying no, she's a zona. And she cannot eat truma do raisa or truma do rabbanon. Next, the ain yorshim shall zev yorshim shall zev yorshim es ksubasa. 
the Ksuba is considered null and void from both husbands. And therefore, with the death of these two husbands, the Yarshim, who usually get rights to the, to the Ksuba, will get no rights whatsoever. Now we have an issue of Hebrew. A woman is married and her husband dies without children. He left a brother. That brother is Chayv and Yibu. That's what this Maset is all about. Now, she's certainly not married to the second husband. There's no room to discuss Hebrew with regard to the second brother. The second brother dies. What about the first brother? I'm sorry, did I say brother? I didn't mean brother. I meant to say the first marriage party. Right? So the first marriage party, that's Isha's Doraisa. And on a Doraisa level, when he dies, and he's childless, and he leaves a brother, she would need Yibum or Chalitza from that brother. Achim shel zevi, achim shel zech holds in the lobby of We're not going to allow Yibum, but we do have a Zika Sibum, and we have to remove that Zika Sibum through Chalitza. Ah, uh, how could she have married the second husband if her first husband has no children and he has a brother? She couldn't marry the second husband. First husband's brother is her true Yavam. The rabbis removed the Yibam option, leaving Chalitza as the only option. And that's a penalty for her being delinquent in her investigation. You know what? I would say just the opposite. It's not really a leniency. She's getting away with murder. She doesn't need Yibam. I don't know if she wants to marry the, the brother. A true Soto whose husband died before he could divorce her is exempt from both Yibum and Chalitza. Okay. But in our case, the woman is a Soto only rabbinically. Means. Again, it's the same point that we said before. The rabbis does for Yibum, but still had to require Chalitza, since biblically she is still subject to Yibum. I'm not sure. Second, this is the easier part. The second husband's brother is not biblically obligated for Nima Chalitza because there was never a marriage to the second. But the rabbis required Chalitza just like they required Get. Because the observant, right, the spectator will think that uh, he's married to the second husband. As far as the first husband is concerned, the rabbi would mafkia Yibum as an option, but they left Chalitza. 
He writes a true soldier. Refuse my mom. Then from both. In the case of that man, however, the woman is a sota only rabbinical. What does that mean? That she's a sota only rabbinical. Yeah, the only thing that comes to mind is that she wasn't deliberate. She didn't try to have the dafka, you know, an extramarital issue. She thought her husband died. But to some extent, she's like a shogeges. And therefore, she doesn't have the status of a sota. And there would be evil and chalitza, but the rabbana penalized her and said she doesn't have evil, but she will have chal She needs rich chalitza. Okay, we go on. Rabbi Yossi Omer. And now we have Machlokas. He says, Ksubos al Nifse Baila Rishon. So, in other words, we said that she cannot claim her Ksuba from either of her two husbands. Rabbi Yossi is saying, saying no, that the first husband is obligated to pay her Ksuba. And Rabbi Eliezer Omer, her Rishon Zakai Bimitsiyasa Maisi Adem first in the red. Now, I'm not sure is Rabbi Eliezer built on Rabbi Yossi or it's his own sheet. He's arguing against the Tanakama because the Rabbanan did not deprive the first husband. Of all these chuyot, which he calls in English entitlements, these are his privileges rather than her, and he should not be penalized to lose these ent in entitlements because of her avera. As far as Mitsiyasa, my Siyadera, first in Torah, he's still, the first husband is still in the, in the driver's seat. There's no reason to remove him from his chuyot because she was an adulteress. So now we have a case where the first husband has two brothers. No, no, no. I'm sorry. The first husband has two wives, I should say, not two brothers. He may have only one brother. But when he dies, then both his both of his wives should fall for Yibam or Chalitza. And now Rabbi Shimon says that her tsara, which is the other wife, not the one that got married to the other fellow, but her tsara is parted from Yibam. And that would seem to indicate that Rabbi Shimon holds that she is excluded from Yibam under like an erva kind of halacha. Now you have a tsaras erva. Well, let's see if he adds anything here. 
seconds. Rabbi Shimon argues with the Tanakhama's ruling that the Rabbana forbade Yibum with the brothers of her two husbands. In Rabbi Shimon's opinion, although the Rabbana forbade her to return to either husband, they did not impose the additional penalty of forbidding her to their respective brothers after their deaths. Thus, the brother of the first husband, who is a true Yavan, may perform either Yibum or Chalitza with her at, at his discretion. Over this one more time, then we'll see if we can wrap it up. I was hoping to finish the mission, it's a gigantic mission. Rabbi Shimon holds that the Rabbana did not forbid Yibu with the two brothers. The Rabbana did not let her go, her to go back to her first husband, but they didn't impose the additional penalty of forbidding her to their respective brothers. Not sure what he means by their respective brothers. The Shani is the head of the picture. I don't know. Thus the brother of the first husband, who was a true Yavam, may perform either Yibam or Chalitza at her, with her at his discretion. And accordingly, if the woman has, has a Tzara, either act will free, meaning either Chalitza uh, Yibum will fear from her Yibum obligation. So you have to know a little bit more about Yibum, but the assumption is that you have two brothers either of which can be miyabin. In other words, you have two yavams. Once one yavam chooses either yivam or chalitza, then he removes the zika sivam from the whole family. And that's exactly what Rav Shimon is applying here because Rav Shimon holds that the zika sivam, which is machayva either yivam or chalitza, is in full force vis-a-vis -vis the first husband. So that if the first husband's brother is miyaving her or gives her chalitza, then other uh, then then her tzara. Ah, I look a second. I forgot to mention tzara. I skipped the gun. I'm really jumped the gun. Let's say that the first husband left brothers, but he also left two wives. So if any of those brothers implement chalitza yibum with in this case, her, then her tzara is now muteras, meaning she doesn't, you know, there's no longer zika even to her tzara once they've consummated the yibum or chalitza with the first wife. The second wife is a tzara, she's, she's out of the picture. And furthermore, and with this will conclude, Rav Shimon Omer, Eina Vlad Menu Mamsa. And if, let's say, after he comes back and he returns and he has a relationship with her, an intimacy from which she gets pregnant, the child is not a Mamsa. Even though the Rabbanan recognized the issues to the second husband, but not to the extent that it would create um, serious.
right, the chalf in the second means of moms. Okay, then, so this is where we'll stop for today. And we're up to the Nisseis Blober Schutz. A little note of it. That's for tomorrow. Okay, then. I'll be a little bit better off once I get the, the which is on order, but you know, until they fill those orders, it takes a while. All right, have a great.